right, let's get into it. For what feels like forever, well, two years in tech time, we've all been waiting, we've been speculating, and now it's finally happened. OpenAI's GPT-5 is here. Tech journalist Casey Newton really just said it all with three words. GPT-5 is alive. You know, after GPT-4 completely changed the game, the hype for what was coming next has been, well, it's been off the charts. But here's the real question, the one we're going to unpack. Does GPT-5 actually live up to all that massive hype? Is this the one that changes everything again? Or is the truth a little more, shall we say, complicated? Let's find out. Okay, so first up, let's look at the official story from OpenAI. They're not just calling this an update. No, no. They're billing it as their smartest, fastest, and most useful model yet. A whole new level of intelligence. So what does that actually mean? Well, according to them, it's not just one thing. It's a whole system that's smart enough to know how to handle your request. It can figure out if you need a quick, simple answer, or if it needs to, you know, take a beat and think longer for the really tough problems. And the big promise? They want to put this expert-level AI into everyone's hands, yep, even for free users. And to prove it's not just marketing speak, they're throwing out some pretty wild numbers. I mean, look at this. It's scoring nearly 95% on a seriously hard math exam and almost 75% on a software engineering test. This shows you exactly where they're aiming, mastering those high-level technical skills. But it's not just about logic and code. They're claiming a big jump in creativity, too. So here, when asked to write a poem, the older model does a decent job. It's fine. But GPT-5, it comes up with this line about a sock curled like a sleeping koi. That's, that's different. It hints at much deeper, more literary kind of intelligence. Okay, so that's the promise. That's the shiny brochure version. But now it's time for a reality check based on what people who've actually used it are saying. AI expert Simon Willison, I think, really nails the feeling on the ground. He says, yeah, it's his new favorite model, but it's still an LLN, a large language model. It's better, for sure, but it isn't some totally new kind of technology we've never seen before. The tech site platformer had this perfect analogy for it. It's like getting the new iPhone. On one hand, it's way better. It's faster, the camera's amazing. It's improved in all these ways that you can feel. But on the other hand, it's still an iPhone. You know what I mean? It's evolution, not a full-blown revolution. And yeah, the initial reviews were definitely mixed. Some really good coders are saying they still prefer Anthropic's model, Claude. And GPT-5 can still make stuff up or hallucinate if you don't specifically tell it to think longer. Heck, even OpenAI's own charts in the launch announcement had mistakes, which people online immediately called chart crime. So if it's a big step up, but not a total revolution, what does that actually mean for us? For the real world? Forget the tech reviews for a second. The biggest question, if how does this affect our jobs, our economy? OpenAI's own research dropped this single, absolutely staggering number, 47.1%. Just let that sit there for a minute. That's the chunk of complex, valuable, professional tasks where they claim GPT-5 performs as well as or even better than human experts. And that 47% isn't just a number pulled out of thin air. It represents a huge jump over their previous models when it comes to real-world knowledge work. We're talking about tasks in law, in logistics, in sales, in engineering. This right here is why the whole future of work conversation is about to get a lot more intense. But of course, with all this new power comes, you guessed it, new risks. The potential for misuse, for misinformation, it all gets bigger. So what is OpenAI doing about the really critical stuff like safety and telling the truth? Well, one of their biggest claims is a massive improvement in accuracy. They're saying that when it uses that thinking mode, the model makes about 80% fewer factual errors than the last version. If that holds up, it could be a huge deal in the fight against AI just making things up. And for safety, they're trying something new. Instead of just getting that frustrating, sorry, I can't help with that brick wall, they're using a new approach called safe completions. 
The idea is to train the model to always find the most helpful, useful answer it can give you while still staying within its safety rules. And here's what that actually looks like. The old way, you ask about something like fireworks and it just shuts you down. Hard refusal. Now, with safe completions, it's more of a guide. It explains why it can't give you dangerous instructions, but then it pivots and offers to help in other, safer ways. It's about steering you in the right direction, not just putting up a gate. Okay, but for all the impressive demos and safety features he announced, there are some huge elephant-in-the-room questions that the official reports are pretty quiet about. The big one being, what exactly did they train this thing on to make it so powerful? Where did all that data come from? And what does that mean for our privacy and for the rights of every artist, writer, and coder whose work might be in there? The technology is moving at lightning speed, but the answers to these questions just aren't keeping up. The official white paper, it doesn't say what the training data is. And as we see new research showing how these models can be tricked by poisoned documents, there are no clear new safety measures being announced to deal with these very real problems. And make no mistake, this is just the beginning. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman says they see orders of magnitude more gains ahead, and they're planning to spend an eye-watering amount of money to get there. So this pace it's only going to get faster. Which brings us back to where we started. Is GPT-5 the revolution? Maybe not. But maybe it's showing us that the AI revolution won't be one giant cinematic leap. Maybe it's a thousand quiet, crucial, and incredibly powerful steps just like this one. And each step makes this technology more capable, more a part of our lives, and raises a whole new set of urgent questions we all need to start answering.